Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to your 12th PSD to Responsive website tutorial and in this video we're going to take a look at the picture element. <laughs> Alright then gang, so we've pretty much done all the styles now and the website's looking pretty neat. This is the desktop view, then as we go smaller we get the tablet view and then eventually we get the mobile view like that. Now, that's all pretty cool, but I mean we're doing something that is really pointless right here and it's a... Uh, downloading this massive image for a mobile screen which is what about this wide that makes no sense whatsoever so what we need to do is find a way to stop that because really when we're downloading that huge image on a mobile device then we're just wasting loads of data we don't need to download an image that large essentially so what we want to do is find a way so that if you're on a desktop yeah we download this big image if we're on a tablet something like this size or in between then it's going to download a smaller image about this big then if we're on mobile we're going to download this tiny little image right here like this okay so that's what we're going to do in this tutorial so just to jump to the code first of all you'll notice that when i made the html i put in this little comment within the main banner and that was to change it to the picture element so that's what we're going to do but before we start making any more html i'm going to jump into the photoshop file right here and i'm going to make three versions or rather two additional versions of this banner so this is the one currently we're, we're using for all different versions whether it's uh, desktop tablet or mobile and uh, basically we're just squashing it down right but what i want to do is keep this one for desktops but then i've created two more files one of them is uh, 960 pixels in width so that's going to be for the banner that i'm going to create for tablets and things like that and then the other one is 480 pixels in width which is going to be for the banner for mobile phones and their uh, smaller devices so what we need to do is grab this banner like this and just drag it to first of all the tablet one and let's position it in the top left like that then press ctrl t then hold shift just to keep everything in proportion and make it about the width of the document then we'll just zoom it right to the top then i'm going to grab this to uh, just form a perimeter around there and then um, what i'll do is just go to image and crop it doesn't need to be exact this you know we've cropped off a tiny little bit at the bottom but that's fine so if i zoom in and go to actual pixels you can see now that this banner is a little bit smaller and it's going to be served up on tablet devices only okay so we're not downloading a huge image when we don't need one just this one next we want to transfer this back into the uh, the mobile one so let's again get that position in the top left and uh, transform that hold down shift before you do it to keep everything in proportion and something like that is going to do guys yeah we'll cut off a little bit of the left but otherwise it's going to look really short so what we'll do again is zoom in and crop this bad boy we'll start at the bottom down here up to the top like that and we'll go to image and crop by the way you can just go to the crop tool i don't know why i'm doing this you can go somewhere down here where is it crop tool and you can just do it in one like file swoop that way if you want to i like to do things the long way around for some reason uh, but anyway that looks pretty good now so that is going to be the mobile version if i go to actual pixels and i'm holding down z to bring up these options by the way um, then this is the smaller one this is the medium one and then this is the gigantic one if i go to actual pixels you can see it's huge so they're the three different images we're going to use so all you need to do now is go to file save for web and devices and um, we'll choose a jpeg because it's kind of like a photo i suppose go to medium quality you'll notice this is now 5k when the uh, default one the big one one was about 12 to 15 or something like that um, and we'll save it as banner hyphen m and that means banner medium right so for medium sized screens so that one's done then we'll go to this one and we'll save this one out also and we'll save this as and by the way this is 2.9k so we've reduced the file size again we'll save this as banner hyphen s for small there we go all right so now we've got the three different images available to us we can go in here and we can add in the picture element so this is a relatively new element and it's just written like that picture okay and we use it to serve up different versions of different images depending on how wide the screen is okay now i'm not going to go into too much depth about this i've already done a video like this on youtube and uh, i'll leave a link to that in the description down below so if you want to learn in detail about how the picture tag works then i'll leave a link to that video you can go and check it out but uh what we need to do essentially is provide a few different source sets okay and we do that using the source tag first of all and then the src set 
the source set, right? And this is going to be the first image for the lowest uh, width screen. So this is going to be in the images folder forward slash banner hyphen s dot jpeg. That's the smallest one, right? So then we give it a media query, if you like, or a media attribute to say when we'd like this image to apply. And I'd like it to apply when the max width is 480 pixels. So anything that is 480 pixels and lower, then this image right here is going to be loaded in. Okay, which makes sense because that's all we need for those kind of widths, a small image. So the next one, source again. And um, oops, have I spelled that wrong? Yep, source. Brilliant, Sean. Okay, so source source set equals images forward slash banner. You guessed it, medium dot jpeg. And this is going to be for media, which has a max screen. Uh, not max screen. Don't know what the hell I'm going on about. Uh, max width of seven six eight pixels. So this is going to pick up all the kind of tablet. Um, devices okay so anything between 488 and 768 it's going to load in this banner right here which is the medium one and then if neither of those two apply then we've got an, um, an image type to fall back on and this is going to be the default one for desktops okay so if none of these filters here apply then this is the image tag it falls back on and it just downloads this one instead so again we need a source set oops source set equals and then it's in the images folder forward slash banner dot jpeg dot uh, jpeg there we go and this is the large one we don't need to add any kind of filter to it then we'll give it an alt and we'll just call this uh, banner doesn't really matter by the way one little thing uh, when we've got different sources like this and different source sets the alt that we give the image tag at the bottom the fallback option is also applied to these images here we don't need to uh, add any kind of alt attributes into these things okay so if we click save now and view this in the browser, it's not going to work mainly because <laughs> this is not supported in a lot of modern browsers. So in order to pick up support for this picture tag, what we need to do is add in a JavaScript polyfill. OK, and a polyfill basically just fills in the gaps in browsers when they don't support something natively. A polyfill will inject that support into the browser so that we can use certain things. OK, so currently this is not supported in a lot of browsers. But if we add a polyfill into this website, then it will support it. It will be supported. So that's what we're going to do. And a polyfill, by the way, guys, is basically just a JavaScript kind of library um, that has a lot of code in it that allows us to use new features in browsers which don't support them. So the polyfill we're going to use is called picture fill. And again, I've done a tutorial on uh, polyfills and picture fills and this whole picture tag. So it's the same link that I'm going to leave down below if you want to learn more. But right now, I'm just going to head over to the picture fill website. All right, then, guys. So here I am at the picture fill website. It's this URL here, which I'll leave down below. So you can just go ahead and click that. Then I want you to click quick start. And uh, it's going to say what the recommended usage is right here. So basically, we need to pop this in our um head file okay so first of all it's a little script with a html5 shiv which just says hey look if the uh, document doesn't already have the element picture embedded into it then just give it that element it's going to create that element for us so that we can use it in our document okay that's what the html5 shiv does and then below that it's got another script with a source of picturefill.js and this little attribute right there is saying async which means and uh, asynchronous which means it's going to download while the rest of the page is downloading as well. You know, the rest of the page isn't going to wait for this thing to download. It's going to do it asynchronously in the same time. So we're going to pop this in our head like that. We'll just copy it and grab this thing right here, pop it in our head. There we go. And uh, let's just move this along a little bit. Oops, just these three lines like that. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but here we go. That looks a bit better now the one thing i want to do is just get rid of this and we're going to use a cdn instead because i've not downloaded this it's not linking to anything yet so i'm going to get rid of that and we can download or link to rather the uh, the cdn instead and that can be found if we go to download and then just go to picturefill.js or the minified version whichever one you want to use then i'll just click that and you can see up here it says CDN, so we can grab that URL and link to it. Then we'll go back into the code and we'll say uh, script source equals and do that. And then we'll say async 
like so and that will be fine I think. Okay so now we've got that linked up we can use the picture element right here so now when we do load this in a browser hopefully it should work. I'm going to save that and uh, head over to this marble thing right here we'll make this a bit larger. Refresh. All right and now if we go to the main banner <coughs> excuse me you can see the picture element is there instead and uh, if we hover over this last one this is the one that's being loaded in just this okay because currently none of these media queries or uh, filters rather these things here max width 480 or max width for, uh, 768 apply but when we get to 768 you can see the uh, the size at the top round about here by the way guys so currently 900 when we get to 768 there we go it switched out the banner for the medium one so now if we hover over the banner M you can see that is the one that's been applied okay so if we go to 480 again it switches out the banner you could see that little thing where it switches if you watch carefully there you see okay so it switched it out again and now it's just downloading this one right here so this is the point guys I mean we've downloaded all three there which is a waste of time but your typical user going on your website is not probably going to be doing this with the website if they are then I suggest they get a new hobby because this is just ridiculous but um, the idea is that if you're loading the web page up on a mobile phone you're not going to be changing the screen size and downloading multiple things you're just going to download this small one right here so that uh, we're not wasting data on the download. We're not downloading something huge when we don't need it. So now this is pretty much fully responsive, this banner. All right. So that is it for this tutorial. And in fact, that is it for this tutorial series, guys. I mean, we've taken a PSD from scratch, built up some HTML and CSS, and we made that mobile menu and uh, made our pictures responsive. So we've done all that from scratch. I hope this has been beneficial to you. What I am going to do in the next tutorial playlist is take a look at Bootstrap and I'll, uh, I'll teach you how to create a website using that. So until then, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and like, and I'll see you in the next tutorial playlist.